Hey everybody, welcome to Hands On Games. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at Dawn of the Zeds, The Battle for Farmingdale. Brains. Alright, today we're going to talk about a game that um, really introduced me to what's possible with thematic solo playing games. I think my previous experience prior to Dawn of the Zeds the Battle for Farmingdale was with war games, um, something like Combat when I was, or I'm sorry, Ambush when I was younger, or other two player games that you play both sides. And a couple years ago, when I started getting back into board games, I'm sure it was one of the lists on Board Game Geek that uh, introduced me to this and Victory Point Games, the little game company that could. Uh, who are right up the road from me. I'm in Oceanside, California. They're in Costa Mesa. I haven't been up there to visit their offices yet. They have open um, game testing days, so I do plan on doing that at some point. Um, but if I could be a game producer for a game company, which I think I could, this is the company I'd want to work for. They just put together some great games, and many of which are focused on the solitaire player, uh, which I am proud to uh, consider myself. So. We're talking about the second edition of this game today. There was a first edition, um, I believe, polybag, uh, you know, in a polybag, um, not in a box, with different different components. Um, before they moved on to the second edition, and I just learned yesterday through their newsletter and through the Board Game Geek forums, they're working on a third edition. So who knows what the third edition is going to look like? But it's probably at least um, some months away, um, if not longer. So. Um, if you like what you see in this video, I would not hesitate picking up this version just because there's a third edition coming out. Um, this is part of the States of Siege series, an excellent series. You're going to see more videos by me from other games on my gaming shelf that are in this series of games. But um, this one is special in that it was my first and in that... It's so ridiculously rich in theme and deep in terms of gameplay content, and I'll try to go through that a bit more in the segment where I show you the show you the, the game itself. This is a game I would recommend. I know I have folks, sorry to go on a tangent here. I know I have folks watching this channel that are strictly uh, sports game players. I know I've got that little niche of folks of watching this. So speaking to them for just a moment, if you've been curious about other board games as you're rolling um, APA and Stratomatic, uh, Replay, History Maker, or one of your football games, or one of your soccer games, if you've been curious about these other games but you know just thought they weren't for you, I would highly recommend you give this game a shot. Now, speaking to everybody, uh, Dawn of the Zeds, The Battle for Farmingdale, is not a game that you play to relax, at least not for me. It's not a game that you sit down and learn for the first time after a long day of work. This is a game you buy because you want an experience, you want an adventure, you want some time at your tabletop, you want a cool map, you want a bunch of pieces, you want some cool cards, and you want it to take you somewhere that you haven't been. This game will do that, but it's at a price, and that price is time. You've got to have some time to devote to this, and once you do, um, you will find a rich gameplay experience that is highly rewarding. It's a game like many solitaire, um, like many solitaire designs that will not let you win more than twenty-five percent of the time, sometimes even less. It's not the destination with these games, it's the journey. And this one packs one hell of a journey. Um, the actual, and before I scare anybody off with my comments about how deep it is in the time investment, let me just clarify by saying yes, it can take anywhere from a half an hour if you do really poorly to two hours if you make it all the way through the deck. Um, and I'd say even closer to two and a half hours as you're learning the game because at least the way I play it, 
after for every turn I'm studying the board I'm looking at where all my civilians are I'm looking at where my heroes are I'm looking where the chaos is I'm enjoying it though I'm, I'm getting the lay of the land every turn and just absorbing you know how things are going so it is truly less of a exercise and strategy on how to beat the game engine and more of an exercise of adventure and enjoying the experience as you're happening it so that's what that's what this game is for me so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you um, the components of the game in general, how the gameplay works, and I'll come back with some final thoughts. All right, so as I mentioned in my opening, there is a lot going on in this game, and that goes for the components as well. What's really cool is Victory Point Games knows that there is a, a bit of a learning curve to the game, and they're going to give you a quick play setup sheet for how to get the game set up on your table for a first play. Um, they give you the victory conditions for those. And then they give you a very thematic and cool walkthrough, talking to you as if you are actually coordinating the actions in Farmingdale to save these people with great visual cues and great textual information about how to play through each turn of the game. So I highly recommend that. Um, please do use these tools that they give you to help learn the game. Um, I should also mention that this manual is fun because it's also it they the the designer and the producers of this game wanted you to have fun not only playing the game but learning the game just cute little cute little things that you've seen maybe in other game manuals down here many Zeds were harmed in the making of this game and you've got um, some some blood stained uh, handprints down here just nice little touches and then a backstory of how the zombie uh, epidemic disease, which is where the word Zeds comes from, in case you're wondering about that, um, you know, how the zombie ep epidemic disease came about. And then of course, you've got, you've got all your rules for, for how to play the game. And um, the game does a, does a good job of explaining everything through the rule book and just giving you tons of information. Um, again, it can be information overload. This isn't a game you're going to learn how to play in 10 minutes. Um, again, you've got to invest some time, and I'm not trying to scare people off, but, like, but if you're like me, sometimes you want something that's, that uh, makes you think, and um, it, it's so rewarding in the end. Now, you're looking at the, um, the original second edition map. The game uh, comes with the, a... a uh, a uh, paper stock, a, a, a cover stock version, glossy cover stock version of the map. It also comes with a traditional Victory Point Games modular puzzle map. Each of these are double sided. You have, this is the more difficult advanced side for the um, second edition missions. And then you have the original side for the classic, for the classic mission as well as the tutorial. Now, I'm going to put these two maps aside, so take a look at it. This is what um, uh, the original second edition had. So I'm going to put these aside now and bring in a nicer, bigger map that I believe is now included in the game. Okay, now you see that's taken up more of the camera. Um, I think I can fit it just about all in there. and. This new map, I believe, is included in new shipments. Uh, Victory Point Games can get upset at me if I'm wrong, but um, I had already owned the second edition when this map was produced, and I ordered another game from them, and they included it in that other game order as a freebie, and I believe they include this, th uh, this third map now for the second edition in new orders. Um, I think that's what I've heard online, so I'm going to go with it. I use it, I find it much clearer, much easier to use, and um, so that's what I'm gonna be showing for this video. Okay, so um, let me segue then into the meat of the game, which is the fact that we are trying to save this town of Farmingdale. The National Guard is on their way, but until the National Guard gets here, we're hunkered down and we're trying to save ourselves from zombies coming in on the highway track, through the mountain track, zombies are gonna be coming down the forest track, and up the suburbs track, all towards the town center. As soon as a Zed hits the town center, game over. 
Um, you can have some bad card draws and that can happen quickly. And speaking of the card draws, the game is driven as many solitaire games are by event cards, which every turn are gonna tell you what's gonna happen. So that's the cool thing about this game. So from a, from a uh, high level point of view, the gameplay is pretty straightforward. You draw a card, you perform the actions on the card, and you move on. Draw the next card, draw the next card. It tells you, it controls the zombies. It controls what they do. Um, but there's tons of stuff that can happen with each one of these cards. So a turn can take anywhere from a few minutes to maybe 15 minutes if there's a lot of stuff going on. Or if you're just taking a lot of time to think about how to spend your precious few actions. So in, the, in all of this fray, the people that you're trying to survive, that you're trying to save, pardon me, are your civilians. So these are your civilian markers, and they're going to be placed all around the map in the town center and the various towns that, um, or sorry, villages that line the map. So you're going to start the game, and you're going to have civilians littering the map, um, waiting to be food for the Zeds. And then when the game starts, here are your Zeds. This is a Zed counter. These guys are going to start. One of these counters of various strength is going to start on each of the tracks. So you're going you're gonna to load up your, your zombies at the beginning of each track. Again, varying strength. It's a random draw from an opaque container, as the instructions say. And for me, it's my uh, Epcot Center mug. Just drop those in there, and anytime we need to draw a new, a new zombie that's gonna populate the board, shake it up and draw one out there randomly. And then you've got your villagers. Villagers are kind of a neat mechanic. This is what their card looks like, or their chit looks like. And You'll notice it says they're defiantly staying. Well, when the zombies, when they finally make contact with the zon zombies, they will turn tail and run and become refugees and will head towards the town center. So you're gonna have you're gonna have villagers on your map. I'm just I'm just putting them down uh, in random places right now because it's easier for me to do that. So these villagers are gonna be hanging out with your civilians to start the game as well. And, well, what do we have to help the civilians and help those villagers survive? We have our heroes. Heroes are represented by their own counters. Um, I won't go through them all, but, but here's Pickles. Pickles the dog. There's Pickles. Um, and you're not gonna be able to use all of these for every game. You get to pick four. One, uh, one you get to choose, three of them are gonna be random. And then the others are set aside and may be discovered dur during the game. But for more information about the heroes, you get these awesome hero cards, which not only tell you about their powers, what they can do, but also a cool little backstory about each one. Again, this game thought of everything. So you get the backstory about pickles here. This is the player map. This is where you're gonna track infection levels, supply and ammo, actions available, research, and it's got your uh, combat tables, which are very simple. Combat is very easy in this game, um, but very fun as well. So in this game, supplies and ammo are at a premium. Um, in the tutorial, you start out with a certain amount, but in the normal game, you're gonna roll you're going to roll a single die to tell you how much ammo you start with and two d6s to decide how many supplies you start with. Um, and typically, if you're like me, you roll low and you make things hard for yourself. So this board exists for you to be able to track all of these items during the game. And I wanted to show you the trackers for that. Here's the infection level tracker. Pretty cool, huh? It's not just a simple it's not just a simple marker, it's, a, it's a, just a neat thematic piece that you're going to use and put on the infection track as you're playing the game. Now, the infection level will go up for a lot of reasons, but what's driving that infection level in a lot of times 
is chaos. Again, cool markers to track the chaos happening on the board. Anytime that your civilians or heroes or any player character comes into contact with zombies in hand-to-hand -hand combat, chaos will ensue. Anytime zombies end their turn in a named space, um, such as a village or a town, one of these chaos markers will be put down. Civilians are going to take four hits before they're sent out of the game. So there's their full strength side. The civilians unit is a, is a weak three. Um, if they take two hits, I'm sorry, if they take one hit, they'll get a hit marker. Then they flip. They take a third hit. They go to their weaker side. And then if they take a fourth hit, they're out of the game, they go to the hospital. They could be sent back into the game via different events later in the game, but for the time being, they're sent to the hospital. Heroes are even weaker. Heroes can take two hits. So, um, and, that's, and that's also with exceptions. Pickles can only take one hit and Pickles is done. But here's Mr. Johnson, um, another, great, another great hero. If he takes one hit, he'll flip to his, um, his weaker side and then another hit and he's done. So just to finish up the, um, the player mat, you're going to be tracking your, your actions available here. You're going to be tracking your ammo and supplies on this middle track. And you'll be tracking any research you do over here. And you'll be keeping this, keeping this handy next to you. Any civilians that get knocked out of the game go to the hospital. Any refugees that make it back to the town center go up here, they can be brought back, they can, they can be used to, to uh, bring civilians or heal civilians, I'm sorry, they can be used to bring back civilians into the game or heal civilians. Um, again, this is all explained in the rules, I'm just trying to give you a brief overview of how the game plays. So, you're going to keep your player mat nearby as you play the game, I'll just move it off to the side, and you're going to follow this last piece of handy dandy reference material I wanted to show you to um, remind you on the sequence of play for the game. Um, again, Victory Point Games does a nice job, gives you lots of materials to, um, to help you play through each turn without having to refer to the manual. So kudos to Victory Point Games for really uh, giving the game player all they need uh, to successfully get through each turn and stay immersed in the game instead of flipping through the rule book. So those are, all the, those are all the major pieces. What I haven't shown you yet are these fate cards. When you have an outbreak, when the infection level gets high enough, and this card tells you, one of your card draws tells you there's an outbreak, you're going to stop the game, you're going to draw one of these cards, and it's going to tell you where the outbreak happens. In this case, it's where the Zeds are strongest. That's not fun. So you've already got a bunch of Zeds on one of the four tracks, and now you're going to be adding another one. So great. Then after you do that and, and, and resolve any issues from the fact that a Zed just popped up, you take the actions on the card. Now what's cool is these fate cards will sometimes give you something good. In this case, um, this is a card I can hold on to and at the beginning of my phase I can place one available hero unit who's not already been eliminated in the town center space. So this is a great card to draw. Um, so yeah, so I hope that gives you an idea of the randomness of the game. There's a lot of fate cards. Um, you may not get through this whole deck. And so you're going to see things from one game to another that you haven't seen um, in previous run-throughs. So everything's going to be a little bit different each time. Okay, Al, so, so what's going on? You really haven't showed us what happens when you're playing the game. Here's what happens. The Zeds here are going to cause chaos and they're going to slowly encroach, and they're going to knock out civilians, and the refugees are going to get, become slow food and get eaten, and they're going to get knocked out, and they're going to get closer and closer, and you're going to have civilians all hunkering down in the town center. You're going to have more Zeds getting closer. They're going to be closing in from all sides, and you're going to start panicking, and then you draw a hero card. Oh, I got a new hero in the game. I'm going to send Pickles over to the mine and try to search for some ammo, but you know what happens when you send Pickles to the mine? You draw the mine card. The mine blows up, and Pickles dies. So Pickles is now out of the game, and the zombies are getting closer. Sheriff Hunt takes out these zombies, but there's zombies coming in from this side and this side, and the tension builds, and eventually they get to the towns, and you manage to get rid of this zombie, you manage to get rid of this zombie, but, but 
Oh no, the zombie just entered from downtown into the city, city center and it doesn't matter that you've got any units there, you just lost. But you got so close and that's what the gameplay is like. Everything's squeezing in. Everything's causing tension and that is the... So that's the beauty of a States of Siege series game from Victory Point Games. Um, there's lots of different ways the game gives you just enough fighting power to stay in the game just long enough that you might have a chance until you draw the National Guard arrives. This is what you're waiting for. It's going to be at the end of the deck and it's going to be in a random position towards the end of the deck so you never know if it's the last card in the game or maybe the fifth from the last card. You just don't know. And then um, based on the state of the game board when the National Guard arrives you're going to give yourself a score it's going to tell you how you did um, you know it depends on lots of factors how many civilians are left how many uh, refugees were saved uh, things of that nature so again it's the replayability is there because it's not just win or lose it's a it's a level of how badly did you lose or how well did you do Okay, so that's an overview of Dawn of the Zeds, the battle for Farmingdale. Uh, again, great game. It's one of the only games that I've rated a 10 on Board Game Geek that's in my game collection, uh, History Maker Baseball being the other. So again, for you guys straddling the fence between regular, you know, normal board games, I'll consider this normal for lack of a better term, or regular, and sports board games, uh, just know that this, this has a place on your tabletop as well. Um, the reason it's a 10 is generally I think about three things when I give out my ratings. The, or two things, sorry. It's a reverse Monty Python sketch. Um, intangibles and tangibles. So, first of all, the tangibles. What's the box like? What's the artwork like? What are the components like? How does it feel in my hand? Um, how does it look on the table? Okay, I think you've seen. I'm, I really like the components in this game. I like the way it looks. And it really doesn't uh, get any better for me there. And then the intangibles. Um, how's the gameplay? How are the mechanics? Is it fiddly? Um, is there wasted time, etc.? And with this game, from the first card turn to the last, I'm completely invested up here. And again, it's a 10 there for me as well. So um, the other States of Siege games are also rated high in Board Game Geek in my collection, but not as high as this one. Um, and something I forgot to mention is that I am not the world's biggest zombie fan. I meant to, I, I meant to talk about this in the intro. Um, I haven't grown up reading zombie comic books or literature. Um, I do watch Dawn of the Z or I do watch um, uh, The Walking Dead. Okay, so I admit to that, I, but I caught on to it late. And as a matter of fact, I think I may have started watching The Walking Dead after I played this game and kind of got interested in the, in the whole genre. Um, I think this game is better than The Walking Dead TV series, if that means anything. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a... So you may think, well, I'm not into zombies. Zombies don't do anything for me. Hopefully, seeing what the gameplay was like and seeing that it's more about... You know, it's 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 much about as much about your heroes, as much about pickles, um, as much about um, saving humanity as it is about the zombies. Maybe that will will grab you. So yeah, so I should mention that as well. Um, so to wrap up, I will um, I will introduce you guys to more states states of siege type games in the future. Um, but I do recommend this game in particular. It's a lot of fun. If you've got a couple hours um, to spare and you just want to sit down and play a fun game that's going to take you on a trip and leave you with memorable characters that you'll be looking forward to visiting time and time again, I can't recommend Dawn of the Zeds highly enough. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click the like button below. And if you like what we're doing in this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We'd love to have you. And until next time, keep on gaming.